Alright, today we're going to review just a little bit first on how we multiply binomials together. Alright, recall that when we had two binomials multiplied together, we started out by multiplying x times x to give us x squared. We multiplied x times negative 7 to give negative 7x. We multiplied 3 times x, which gave us positive 3x. And 3 times negative 7, which gave us negative 21. So we multiplied everything in the first parentheses with everything in the second parentheses. Then we saw, oh yeah, these guys are common terms. So that would simplify to x squared minus 4x minus 21. The alternate way in which we've done it is to do it by the box method. So we wrote x plus 3 on the top x minus 7 on the bottom. We multiplied each dimension of the box, so x times x was x squared. x times 3 was positive 3x. x times 7, negative 7x. And x, uh, sorry, negative 7 times 3 would be negative 21. We get the same terms, and we simplified here in our like terms, and combine them still to get this. All right, so what we did is we multiplied two binomials together to get four terms that simplified to a trinomial. That means that this trinomial and these binomial terms are congruent. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start here and go backwards and find out what do we multiply to get this in the first place. All right, then. All right so Let's go back to what we just did. Here is our trinomial, and we're going to try and find the binomials we multiplied together to get it. So recall that we multiply the first space right here and here to get the first term here. So in order to do that, two things multiply together to get x squared and their binomials. So this first space is going to be x times x to give us our x squared. Now. When we multiplied our last terms together, that gave us our last term up there. So we know that these two numbers are going to be factors of 3. And to get our middle term, we know we multiplied the inside and the outside terms here and added them together. Likewise, if we did that with the box, our x squared went in this first box here. We multiplied together to get our x squared, and we know that would have to be x times x. And our last numbers we multiplied together here to get our positive 3. And we had some terms right here which we added up, and they added up to negative 4x. So what we're looking for then are two numbers that multiply together to get 3 and add up to get 4. But wait, that's like that x we've been using. We can set it up the same way. So that means the number we're multiplying together to get is 3, and we're going to add those numbers together to get our negative 4. All right, now we're looking for two numbers. So let's see. Well, the only factors we have of 3 would be 3 and 1. So 3 and 1, but I need a negative 4 when I add them together. Oh, so if they're both negative, negative times a negative gives me a positive, and they add up to get negative 4. Beautiful. All right, let's uh, put this in our box here and see what happens. All right, x squared plus, minus 4x plus 3. It is what we started with. Now, let's see. This row, the only thing we have in common is an x. That's great. The greatest common factor in this row would be, well, they both have a 3, and this one's negative. The uh, greatest thing they have in common in this row was, well, nothing. So 1, and this is a negative. So check it out. My binomial factors are x minus 3 times x minus 1. Same as the numbers we have right here, x minus 3 and x minus 1. These become the terms that we need for our binomial factors. And we already know that it worked because we see right here that it works, and we can also double check it in our box to see that it works. So once you do the x, you can just pop them right down here into your factors, and here are your binomial factors. And remember, you know you love math. 